little pig, little pig, let me in. Do not make me ask. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> New hat. Is it really that bad? Hey, Blue Goblin here. Uh, here to review comic books that kicked off the month of November 2016. November 2nd, I believe, is the correct date of this particular week of books. I'll be damned. I don't have any indie titles. Nothing. Shit. So, what we're going to do is just talk about the big two. DC and Marvel. Shit happens. And then you get slime. And then you get slime. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, we're going to start off with uh, DC Comics. We're going to start off with uh, Aquaman number 10. Mara in charge. Uh, look, um, no disrespect to Dan Abnett. I mean, you're a great writer. Great writer. You did, did some fantastic stuff with Marvel. But here in DC, I, I just, I just wish I was feeling it, how you, I just wish I was feeling what you do for DC as much as I, as much as you do for Marvel. It's just, I just feel like you're hiding your resentment, not Dan Abnett, I mean, I'm talking, uh, this is directed to DC Comics in general. I feel like you're trying to contain but somehow at the same time still slightly show your resentment toward Arthur and Mira's relationship because you already hit the reset button with it because before Rebirth they were already married and now you're in this Rebirth and she's trying to prove herself worthy to marry him I'm like okay whatever I know some things in the prior universe are merged with the new 52 stuff and it's everything's just been rebirthed and everything I, I get it but hitting the reset button on their relationship and then teasing the fact that maybe they just aren't meant to be together that's a load of shit that's just bullshit to the highest degree and on top of that I just I'm getting little sparks of ca character assassination at Mira uh, it's almost as if you're trying to tell us that she's not going to end up with him. Why? And it goes to comic book publishers altogether. Marvel, DC, Indie, any, any comic book publisher that has a problem with superhero relationships. I don't get it. I really don't get it. You really seriously are meaning to tell me that you honestly believe superheroes are meant to live alone? Anytime a superhero is in a relationship, I get worried that he's going to break it up because of reasons. It's like, heroes are best alone in, in the shadows. Like Batman. Yeah, that shit works for Batman. This stuff don't work for Aquaman and Mira. I mean, they're, they're, they're one of my, they're like in my top ten best couples in comic books in general, period. Because you think the king would have a wife. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Yeah, my girlfriend, she she nailed around the head. Why can't the king have a queen? But in all seriousness, no. I still love the character of Mira. I love what she's how she is portrayed for the most part. Yeah, you know, I I definitely do sense a difference in her since now they've done went through rebirth, because in the new Fifty Two, Mira was one of the best characters going. You know, never mind Aquaman. I mean, Mera, she was badass. The way she controls water, I mean, don't get me wrong. Mera in the Rebirth still has traits of her being badass. She can literally suck all the liquid out of a tank and make it crumble. How can you not be impressed by something like that? This issue was fine. And you can really sense that Mira truly does love Arthur, truly does want to be with him. Forget about tradition. Forget about who says this or who says that. Yeah, you know, it's like 
the the Atlantean tradition that you have to prove you're worthy. It's like last time I checked, Arthur's the king. Shouldn't it be his say so and his decree and his royal command who he ends up being with? I don't know. But this issue was fine for what it was. I'd give it a three, three and a half, somewhere in there. Bombshells, number nine, nine uh, blah, 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 number 19. He's watching you. Um, it's another story featuring the Batgirls. Uh, Marjorie Bennett's still killing it on this one. Uh, it was, it's nice to take a little break from the main story and folk go back to a story featuring all the Batgirls and everything. I uh, thought this was fine. Uh, Lois Lane makes an appearance in here. Thought it was very well put together. I gotta say though, uh, <laughs> Tim Tim Drake, uh, he just sticks out in, in, in this little group. I mean, there there's panels and pages where he's like the lone male in a whole sea of women. You know, <laughs> lucky bastard. Uh, but <laughs> in all seriousness, though, uh, they come across the uh, the Reaper and everything. Really badass look. Love it. Um, decent story. Decent story. We got some connect. We got some appearances with uh, the Penguin and Killer Frost. Killer Frost looks amazing. This was a fun issue. This was fun. It was cute. I enjoyed it. Nothing more. Nothing less. Miss Bennett, thank you again. This was great. Uh, give it a three point five. Batman number 10. Um, yeah. yeah, this this was this was this was odd. This was really odd. You got Batman confronting Bane. Um, but he's confronting Bane where he, I I would assume is Bane's stronghold. Uh, he's confronting he's he's having a confrontation with Bane. It's more like a fight. But in here, Bruce is literally repeating the same line over the same lines over and over again throughout the entire issue. It's almost as if he's like chanting a mantra. And uh, while dealing with Bane, Bane reveals that yes, he's no longer on the Venom, so he's no longer able to hoist Batman up and break it. <clears throat> Excuse me, and break him. But he finds a way. Um, we'll give a minor spoiler there. Bane does, um, does, I don't know if he actually breaks the bat, but he sure as hell bends the bat. It looks, ooh, it looks painful. It's like, you know how, um, let's, let's, let's talk about wrestling here. You know how Alberto, anybody knows how Alberto Del Rio and Carlito you used to do that backcracker thing where they jump up behind the guy and drive the knees into the back. Now picture Bane doing that to Batman. Except instead of jumping behind him, Batman's like laying on his stomach on the ground and Bane puts his knees into Batman's back and pulls backward. It just, ooh, just looks really sick. But of course, because it's Batman, he gets thrown into a death trap by Bane, and of course Batman, he gets out of it. He's Batman. That's your reason. He's Batman. Um, this is this was just an odd issue. The artwork was fantastic. Artwork was fantastic. It's just the storytelling in this particular issue just kind of just left me going like this a lot, and I'm just like, eh, eh. I give it a three. Cyborg number four. Cyborg's getting all these memories unloaded and everything. Yeah, and uh, he's, you know, still recovering from having all these nightmares that are literally taking o taking over him. But then there's something that he envisions. He envisions somebody in a cloak, 
and they say in this per in this person in the cloak says I was the love of your life and Vic is like trying to say how come I don't remember you how come I can't see your face and the cloaked figure says well you don't really have any memory of me anymore but I think anybody with a functioning brain cell as you read this issue kind of know where they went with this and I'm just gonna leave it at that I'm not gonna ruin anything else uh, I thought I thought it was a finely done issue not bad uh, give it a 3.5 as well way above average just nowhere near perfect Green Lanterns number 10 first like I said that's 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 pretty cool that's pretty cool cover uh, Humphreys Pensica Ferreria and blonde this everybody who worked on this you did a good job this is uh we finally get to see the Phantom Lantern um, as far as costume wise, it's nothing original. Uh, he his cut the Phantom Lantern's costume kind of looks like a cheap dollar store knockoff of um, the Parallax costume. It really does. It's like they're trying to pass it off, looking like the Parallax costume. It looks like Parallax's costume, but not really. And I'm like, whatever. Uh, the powers are impressive. Um, I don't know. I, I just look at the Phantom Lantern's powers, and I'm just thinking of, you know, the Indigo Tribe could pretty much do the same thing. So how, maybe this Phantom Ring has much, 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 much more power than the Indigo Tribe, than Indigo Lanterns individually have. That's probably what the case is, because, you know, I, I'm a heavy analyzer sometimes, and I sometimes I notice the small things. It's like they were just building up this phantom lantern and this phantom ring to have just unimaginable power. And so far, so far, all I'm seeing is a guy in a parallax knockoff costume doing some of the same stuff that the Indigo Tribe does. That is literally all I've seen so far. Uh, but it doesn't mean the it doesn't mean that's bad. I mean, this was still very nicely told. The plot, the direction it's going in, it's still good. The character development is still there. Uh, Simon and Jessica are, you know, they're going through some really wild shit in here that makes them question, is this green ring worth it? Because before we get to the Phantom Lantern, we have them toying with the idea of possibly taking the Phantom Ring for themselves. Uh, it's just very well-told storytelling. It doesn't earn any points for originality. That, that goes without saying. But... For what it was, it was nice. And I thought DC and everybody that worked on it did a good job with it. Uh, I'm just hoping that this is a slow start to what could possibly be an amazing story. Just just saying it like it is, folks. 3.5 out of 5. Harley Quinn, number 7. Look, I'm going to go ahead and say it. I not a fan of Harley with a mohawk. It just doesn't look right to me. It just doesn't look right. Um, but she's still undercover, trying to get a hold of these, trying to get closer to these people who she's out to get. You know, she's out to revenge because they killed her favorite postman. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I swear to you, if you're not reading this series, that is literally her, literally her motivation for getting a hold of these people is because they killed her postman. So the, this group, this gang takes her. They still don't know who she is. I don't know how you couldn't figure it out, but they take her to this club where it's like a superhero fetish club. It's like it, it's like a, a fetish nightclub, and everybody's dressed up like superheroes and supervillains. It's it's really comical, no pun intended. But uh, <laughs> and then to make matters worse, minor spoiler here: it's the the club is owned and run by Penguin. And there's a really awesome scene between Penguin and Harley in here that I'm not. And that's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to ruin what happens. I'm not going to ruin who says what to who. I'm just going to say, pick up this book and read it. I think you. I think you'll have fun with it. It was fun. I mean, it's everything you would come to expect in a Harley Quinn book written by Connor and Palmiotti. I mean, it's just fun. Pure, solid fun. Is it meant to be taken seriously? Some Harley Quinn fans might. But 
don't take it too seriously. It's meant to be cute. It's meant to be fun. It's meant to be cheeky and kind of, you know, <laughs> a little on the, yeah, cuckoo side. <laughs> you said it best, honey. Uh, another 3.5. Oh, Christ. Man, if I could, if I could channel my inner Negan, I gotta say, this shit was horrible. <laughs> Justice League number eight. God damn it. I did not like this shit. I'm gonna take Lucille and rip this book to shreds. Negan mode off. I'm done with this. How many fucking times do we have to have storylines where the Justice League fight each other? And it's it's like motivations are different like there's like you can have brainwashing, computer malfunctioning, emotional struggles, mind control or stuff like that. But Bottom line is, I've lost count of how many times we have had scenarios in which the Justice League are at each other's throats. I'm sick of this redundant, repetitive bullcrap. It's like, oh, it's like DC is like, oh god, we gotta, we gotta get some stories to fill in before we cross over with Suicide Squad. Oh god, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Uh, let's just do another storyline in which the Justice League is fighting each other rather than protecting the Earth. Oh, that, don't worry about it. It'll still sell. This was this is ridiculous, folks. I really wanted to believe that once Rebirth happened, this title could really go somewhere and get away from what from one of the things that drove me away from it to begin with. It's just that DC just don't listen. They just don't get it. You repeat the same plot and. You tweak a couple of things, you change a couple of little things, but the plot is still remain the same. Justice League versus themselves, and I'm just so fucking sick of it. It's repetitive, redundant, it's lazy. I just, I'm done. I'm done with this crap. Two out of five, and I'm being nice. We're going to end off DC with Superman number 10. This was great. This was great. Tomasi and Gleason basically giving us like the pilot episode to the Super Sons. In here, we see the Super Sons come face to face. Robin and Superboy. And oh my god, this was amazing. This was fantastic. It was fun. I loved every bit of it. It's like... I've, I've said this before, I'm going to say it again. Damien may not be a Richard Grayson, but I swear to God he is a dick. This, this, Damien Wayne has got to be one of the most arrogant pricks in the DC Comics library. And he's one of the good guys. And there's a moment in here... I'm not going to ruin what caused it, but there's a moment in here when some, there's something that happens to Damien in this book, and when I saw it happen, my first initial reaction was, you little fucker, you had that coming. Because Damien's one of those characters where he just doesn't know when to quit. It's like, we get it. You really literally think you're better than everybody else on the planet. You literally think that way. But there are times you run your mouth too much and you're getting those messages through body language and facial expressions from people all around you. And they tell you, shut your goddamn mouth and you just don't know when to quit. And when John does what he does to Damien, that was my initial first reaction is, you little bastard, you deserved what you got.
But then you throw in the dads, the old men, Batman and Superman, into the mix, and it just makes for one hilarious ride, and I loved it. It was great. An easy four out of five. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's move on to Marvel. Start off Marvel with Avengers, number one. The all-new, all-different title may be gone, so let's just reset it and go right, just call it, just Avengers. Uh, Mark Wade, Mike Del Mundo, and let's not forget the Alex Ross cover. Ooh, nice. So this Avengers lineup looks like it's Spider-Man, Sam Wilson, Captain America, Thor, Hercules, Vision, and the the new Wasp. I gotta say, very impressive lineup. And Mr. Wade, I want to shake your hand, Mr. Wade. This was spectacular. <coughs> oh, excuse me. What a monumental start to this series. You started this off with a humongous bang. You didn't start with a bang from a gun. You started with a bang from a fucking bazooka. I don't want to get further into detail because I really, really do not want to spoil this. I don't really want to hardly spoil anything. But one thing I will say is I was not a fan of Peter Parker in this book. Spider-Man was fine, but Peter Parker kind of came off like a uh, broke back Tony Stark. It just doesn't work sometimes. I can understand you want to you wanted to evolve the character of Peter Parker. You wanted to get him away from the mundane and you wanted to do something di different with him. I get it. And there are sometimes the whole Parker Industries Dr. Parker shit works. There are times it does work. But when it doesn't work, when I just ain't feeling it, it hurts to read it. Um, but everybody else seems to function just fine. Um, but, oh my god. That ending. I can't... I can't, I can't ruin it. I, I just can't. Mr. Wade, thank you. This was incredible. Easy four out of five. Jesus. Hey, let's keep the Mark Wade goodness going. Champions number two. Mark Wade's on this one too. Humberto Ramos. This was good stuff. Uh, it's time to do some recruiting. So let's bring in Cyclops. Young Cyclops. Uh, don't worry, that cover, that doesn't happen. Um, it's basically this new lineup of heroes and they're, they're at a campfire. And what this issue basically was, was everybody getting to know each other. You know what? It's simple, but it works. It really works. How else are you going to get connected to these characters? How else are they going to gel well together as a team? First, let's get to know each other. Hey, how you doing? I'm such and such. How you doing? It's nice to meet you. Tell me a little bit about yourself. And then they go, okay, and they, they explain what their story is, and they say, well, let's hear about yourself, you know? It's your basic meet and greet storytelling, but man, Mark Wade just makes it great. Good stuff. Everybody's testing out their powers, explaining how they work and everything like that. But then, <laughs> then we get to the very, very, very awkward cliffhanger. <laughs> but awkward in a very lightly amusing way. This was amazing. I loved it. Another four out of five. Mark Wade just kills it with Marvel. Marvel, do yourselves a favor. Don't ever let this man go. Whatever you're paying him, you might want to give him a raise. He's doing such wonders for your company and for some of your most beloved characters. Mark Wade just equals money. 
let's go on to Death of X number three. Further building to the IVX storyline, and um, yeah. Why are you doing this to me, Marvel? Why? 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 Why are you, what are you doing? I just kissed your asses a few seconds ago, and now feeling disappointed. I I knew that I should have known. I, I knew this was coming. I really did. I, I knew. I knew you were going to go there with this. I, I knew you were going to paint the X-Men up as the villains. You just can't help yourself. I was talking with a friend of mine not too long ago, and, and he and I both agreed that Marvel's just bitter at the X-Men because they can't make as much money off of them as they want to because Fox has got a hold of them in the box office. So you're going to be petty and bitter about it and you're just going to con con continue to screw the X-Men over. You're going to just take the X-Men and you're going to fuck them all right in the butt. Right in the butt. Dick Summers, Magneto are going to be working together apparently. And Dick Summers his way of recruiting new X-Men onto the team, it's ludicrous because you're basically kidnapping these people and then telling them that they do indeed have a choice. But then he gives these little speeches to help sway their decision. What you really should be doing if you're going to be recruiting new mutants to join your cause is why don't you try calling them? Or go to them and just say, hey, we have a problem and we need your help. Are you interested? Yes or no? If they say yes, great. If they say no, then don't try to be an ass about it and sway them. It's like, oh, but you can have this and you'll be remembered through time and you'll be, you'll be a part of history. You'll be saving our kind. Well, if you're going to put it that way, then maybe I should join you. I'm like, seriously, Psychos, why don't you promise that Emma Frost will blow him if she, if y'all win? I'm like, good God. And to top it all off, it's like you're also, not only are you making the X-Men look like villains, most, most of them, not all of them, most of them. Not only are you making them look like the villains, but you're also looking, it also appears that this whole Inhumans versus X-Men war zone is going to be mostly caused by misunderstanding. Because from what I'm gathering so far, it seems like the Inhumans aren't full, not all of them are fully aware what the Terrigen Mist truly does to a mutant. But of course, Dick Summers and Magneto, they're probably going to, they're probably going to hear that this was a misunderstanding, but they're just not going to accept it and they're still going to declare war. And I just see this unfolding very badly. And I really, honest to God, hope I am wrong. Um, three out of five. Spider-Man 2099, number 17. Peter David. I salute you, Mr. David. You still got it. You've been through so much personal health problems and everything, but that doesn't stop you from giving us such great storytelling. I mean, this was just good stuff. Loved it. <laughs> um, probably my favorite part of this book was the scene between Miguel and Electra on the plane. He's like, "What are you doing here?" It's like they're. It's like kind of combating, confronting each other, hand to hand style. But he's like, you know, Miguel's just repeating to himself, repeating to her, "Hey, look, I gotta pee." <laughs> it's, just, it's just, he's like. Electra's like, are you going to help me? He said, yeah, but I still have to pee. <laughs> uh, it's just it's just good stuff. Um, I'm all for Mig Miguel working alongside uh, Electra. I'm all for it. 
it looks like it really it could really go somewhere. Dave, Mr. David has it. Just he still has that magic. I mean, I think him and Mark Wade have been hanging out. I mean, this is this was fun. I, I enjoyed it. I'm I I don't want to I don't want to go into further detail because this stuff was so good. I just don't want to I don't want to give too much away. All I say is pick this issue up. If you're a fan of this character and if you love Peter Davis' work, then trust me, you won't be disappointed. Um, I give it a give it a 3.5, around 3.5 and a four or a four around that area. Spidey number 12. Oh man, this was good. This was so good. Spidey versus the Sinister Six. This was amazing. This was so, so good. And what really troubles me, though, is that I'm wondering, is this the last issue of Spidey? Because if it is, damn, you ended on a high note so high, you left me wanting more. I just... But if you're going to end the series right here, I think you picked the right place to do it. You got... Spidey dealing with the Sinister Six while you have Peter working up a relationship with Gwen Stacy. This was so good. It was cute. It was fun. It was action-packed. This truly felt like an honest-to-God punch-you-in-the-heart-with-goodness. It felt like a traditional issue of The Amazing Spider-Man from back in the day, just with modern twists to it. Because I don't believe anybody had tablets and smartphones and YouTube back in the 60s. Uh, but, rest assured, this was amazing. Pun intended. Four out of five. Awesome. Let's end this with something godly. The Unworthy Thor, number one. Jesus! Jason Aaron, Oliver Capel. <whistles> damn awesome. That's what this was. This was damn awesome. Thor, the, uh, Thor Odin's son. Trying to keep any glory that he has left while he's told of another hammer. He's told of another hammer and if you hear any noise in the background it's the dog downstairs barking. But he's told of another hammer. Gee, you think? And he's like, well, the hammer it must be at Asgard. So he races off on a flying goat. Yes. Yes. No, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> back to the back to the book. He goes goes to Asgard. But dun, dun, dun. What a cliffhanger. I can't spoil it. All I say is what an ending, what a twist, loved it, this issue was awesome, damn awesome, too bad it's going to be a miniseries, really, really cool, loved it, an easy 4, maybe even a 4.5 out of 5, awesome, well, that's it for this video, everybody, uh, those, book, those are the books that started off the, the month of November 2016, I hope you enjoyed that review. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done it already. Go to my Blue Goblin X channel. I've just gotten back into doing some wrestling videos. My next planned videos for that are possibly a review of NXT TakeOver Toronto, as well as with special guest, my girlfriend Jennifer. Uh, my next plans for that, for that channel are, like I said, NXT TakeOver Toronto, which... I'm hoping we can get to watch here in just a few minutes. Oh, no, wait a minute. That's tomorrow night. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> yeah, today's Friday. That's tomorrow night. Shit. 
uh, but also would like to review Survivor Series S with another with special guest. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Hail Hydra. See y'all later.